In this chapter, we're going to start to learn about all the things that you can do in a 2D sketch. And 2D sketches are the basis, the fundamentals of almost every component that you're going to make. So becoming very familiar and getting really efficient with these tools should be considered mandatory. We're in a blank part workspace, and the first thing to do is to get into sketch mode. You can sketch on flat planes or flat faces. In our case, we don't have anything in the workspace yet. We don't have any faces. So we're just going to select a plane. We can select a plane from the 3D area by left clicking it. And we'll see it highlights over here. Uh, or we can select it directly from the Design Explorer. In any case, select your plane and then activate 2D Sketch. We can see what happens here. The 2D Sketch toolbar becomes active. And our view is also rotated automatically to look at the plane head on. The first tool that we'll look at today is the line tool. Let's left click it in the ribbon and you can see that the cursor changes to indicate that the line tool is active. To start creating lines, you'll want a single left click anywhere on the canvas and then move your mouse. We can see that we get a preview of the line. To end the line, you'll single left click again. Now it's common, especially when creating lines, to create more than one line at once. And so the default behavior is to keep going with the lines. So you can kind of create as many as you like in a row. When you end the line on a node that is connected to a figure, like this line is connected to this node, uh, you can just left click and it will end automatically. A way that you can also end the line automatically without doing that, just in free space, is to double left click. This double left click also works with nodes. So we have the origin, which is a node here, and it doesn't have a figure attached to it, for example, a line. So normally, if we left click that, we're gonna continue to get the line tool. But if we double left click on the node, it will end. So working with this particular set of lines that we've created, let's look a little bit deeper into what we can do with them. Let's grab the select tool, and we'll notice that we can move the lines themselves or we can move the nodes of the lines. We can move these lines and nodes really freely because there are no constraints, there's no dimensions, they're just free floating in space. If we were to start to put a little bit more data around these lines, for example, we could dimension this node from the origin and say maybe seven centimeters. Now, if we wanted to move this node, it's gonna go up and down only in a straight line. So as you define your sketch and start putting dimensions and angles and constraints, you'll be able to move objects less and less. And this is what you want to have happen. You want to be able to move no objects before you move on. A lot of times you're going to want to make lines that are up and down or horizontal. And you'll notice that if you move the mouse close to where horizontal or vertical would be, you get these little constraint symbols. Here's a horizontal one and it kind of snaps. Here's the vertical one. It's kind of hidden by the, the dimension, but you can see it kind of snaps to be up and down. And if you release the mouse during the snapping action, you can see a constraint is automatically applied. And similarly, other kinds of constraints can be inferenced here. So in this case, because we're exactly perpendicular to that line, a perpendicular constraint is going to be automatically applied if we snap to that particular area. Other kinds of constraints can also be applied. For example, a parallel constraint, right? When we get right parallel to that line, it snaps and we get the little preview. So now if we were to move one of these lines, they're both gonna move. Another property that can be inferenced is equality. So we can go ahead and move this line to be roughly the same length. And we can see we get these two equal symbols here. So if we were to double click this here, we have the equal constraint automatically applied. And if we make one line longer, maybe by constraining it to an end, we see that the other one will follow its length. When you're creating a line, you have the option of entering in the length and the angle in real time. You can see these values are changing in real time as we move the mouse around. Currently, we have the length value selected. And if we were to just simply type on the keyboard five and then press tab, we are now locked to five centimeters. Likewise, if we want to, we can put it in an angle. In this case, uh, why don't we put 45 degrees? So now we have a five centimeter line at 45 degrees and we can press enter to finalize it. 
we can keep going here and uh, maybe we want to do a four and 135 is good so we'll press enter and we'll go straight up and we want this to be at two we see the constraint inferencing is putting a perpendicular constraint for us so that'll be great we'll left click and we'll go over to the origin we want this line to be uh, left and right, right? So we're going to get it as close as we can, and we see that we have a parallel constraint uh, being applied for us, and that's going to give us what we want. And we're going to go straight down and uh, left click there. So entering these values in real time is optional, and you, if you don't like the way that that looks, you can even just turn them off by using the toggle real time dimensioning uh, toggle up here. And we can see that they're no longer there. When you're dimensioning lines, there's several kinds of things that you can target for your dimension, and there are several kinds of dimensions that you can make. Let's grab the dimension tool, and the most common thing that you might do is just to create the dimension of the length of a line. We'll hover over a line when the dimension tool is active, and we'll just left click, and we'll drag to uh, preview where the dimension will be located, and we'll left click again to place it. Now we can enter in the value. So let's type a value of maybe uh, nine, and we'll press enter. And we can see that the line updates to reflect our new value. If we wanted to change this again, we could just double click it and maybe type seven. And we can see that the line updates. So clicking the line itself will allow you to create a, a length dimension. You can also target nodes. So if I wanted this node and this node to be four centimeters apart, I can target the nodes specifically. I don't have to target the line itself. The other kind of dimension that you can create is an angle dimension, and this will happen when you click between two lines. We see that we have an angle preview. We can left click to place it, and we can type in a value, 135. If you'd like to delete particular lines, you can click the select tool, and you can select the line and just press the delete button. In this lesson, we've covered creating lines, stopping lines where you'd like them to be, continuing lines in a row, dimensioning lines in real time, creating dimensions like angles, dragging nodes around, inferencing of constraints during line creation like parallel, equal, or perpendicular, uh, horizontal, or vertical. And we've talked about deleting lines by selecting them and pressing delete.